I'm John Batchelor with Larry Kudlow of CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. We speak much of the federal government and the contest for the presidency. However, we are the United States of America and the health, the financial health of the states will continue troubled no matter who wins the contest in November or is inaugurated in January. And we welcome now Veronique de Regie of the Mercatus Center, writing most recently at Town Hall. The looking at work done by her colleagues Eileen Norcross and Olivia Gonzalez at Mercatus about the fiscal condition of the states. And there are 50 states, we could add in D.C. It is worth debating that the top states' fiscal condition are the energy patch. But I especially, well, I'm keen on starting at the bottom, which is where we live here in the East Coast. Veronica, very good evening to you. Okay, I throw Illinois down on the table, and Larry, Matt, Larry calls me with Connecticut. What have you got for worst fiscal condition? Good evening to you, Veronique. Um, so, f- worst fiscal condition, if you go, uh, let's say, the last five, it's Illinois, New Jersey, uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Puerto Rico. And so, obviously, none of the U.S. states are as as bad a shape as Puerto Rico, but they're in, in, in really bad shape. Which is why we need Puerto Rico, Larry, so that we're not at the bottom. Exactly. Well, I mean, I guess maybe, I mean, Puerto Rico may be kind of a, 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 an example of what we could become, even though many of these states could become, even though I don't think it could get that bad because they have other factors. But, yeah, and then you have New York. Obviously, it's 42, Maine, California. All these were are at the bottom, you know. So, Veronique, let's just look at Puerto Rico for a second because it's very much in the news um, with congressional proposals to set up what I call an emergency financial control board. We had one in New York when New York went bankrupt in the late 1970s. Um, it sounds to me, since this thing, as I am told by the lawyers on the Hill, this bill will permit an opening of the union contracts, which are such a large part of Puerto Rico's bankruptcy. Yes, I agree. And if that's, if that's true, uh, Veronique, then... It seems to me that's the way to go. Now, I don't know if they'll get passage, and I'm going to ask you, is that the right way to go? Well, here, I mean, there's a lot of debate over over whether to allow the state to go bankrupt, and, 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 and I think you hinted on two things. The only way where it's actually doable is, one, if you have a really strong uh, control board, that actually guarantees and that feeds into your second one that the special interests that have benefited for so many years and have actually uh, led because of the crazy benefits that they've gotten from the government, um, the, these special interest hands are tied and then that you can actually really reform benefits to uh, public employees. You can actually renegotiate union contracts. You can do all of these things. If you can't do these things, then it's completely unrealistic. Um, I mean, it's, I actually would be against mm. bankruptcy. And, it, and it's really stunning when you actually look at, the, with the fiscal ranking, one of the things that this does is it actually really looks at the fiscal situation um, as assessed more honestly than states usually do. So, for instance, it actually looks at the real level of um, unfunded liabilities. And Puerto Rico is like in the red on all these measures. Um, and and it's, it's pretty dramatic. But, you know, Connecticut, where you are, right, is, um, is, not, is not far behind. It's slightly better on a, on a bunch of, um, you know, fiscal slack kind of indicators, but um, it's, it's really in bad, in bad condition. So let me just one more on, on Connecticut now. Um, you're quite right. It's, a, it's yeah. a terrible shape. All the all these tax hikes have actually depressed the economy so much that the deficit has grown. Now, it is said, Veronique, that 49 percent of the state government workers' pensions and health care benefits, 49 percent are unfunded. And I don't know if you're familiar with that number, whether it's right or wrong. And when you make those assertions, like for Illinois, it's a big number in New York, what kind of um, 
discount rate that they use? You know, what what are their is it eight percent or is it four percent? Forty nine percent is actually not a realistic number. Actually, it's much higher when you uh, when you uh, use a, a proper discount rate. I bet you that. Connecticut, the official numbers, they probably use something like 7 or 8%. Mm-hmm. And, and that's completely crazy. Um, but uh, so I, I, I bet you, I don't know Connecticut in details, but I, it, usually all of these states, they suffer from the same thing. They overspend, they overtax, they overpromise their public employees, and they use fiscal um, and accounting gimmicks to actually hide the fact that they don't put enough money to fund their liability. So they end up um, showing that their liability, unfunded liabilities are much slow, uh, smaller than they actually are. And Connecticut, I bet you, is way above 40, 49%. They have massive debt obligations. They have unfunded liabilities. And at, in addition, they have governance, weak governance. But they like it this way. I, I just did a report about Illinois, Cook County Jails. Yeah. And they waste an enormous amount of money holding people before trial in detention in Cook County Jail for years. I mean, yeah. they, they stay in for two, three years on crimes where they could be dismissed or rendered or sometimes they walk away once they get to the court. There's no controlling that. That's, uh, that's part of the state budget. It's not just but, the unfunded mandates. It's the inability of Illinois to govern itself. No, I agree. And, and, and it goes back again to the unhealthy marriage of the government, of the state, or of Puerto Rico, and special interest. And, and, and in fact, you can expand it to the, to the national government. I mean, we know the kind of fiscal adjustment that we would need to reduce the debt-to-GDP ratio, and that's true at the state level. And what you need to do is, is implement fiscal adjustments that are mostly based on cutting spending rather than raise taxes, and mostly reforming entitlement, like uh, uh, transfers, um, and, and also the pay of public employees. That we know, the academic literature is very clear. The, also, the thing that the academic literature is extremely clear about is like 80% of the attempt to f- do fiscal adjustment, they fail. Why? Because they don't, they don't put in place the kind of fiscal adjustment that actually leads to a reduction in debt-to-GDP ratio. Why? Because they continue catering to those special interests. And so, yeah, the, the governance issue is a, is a real problem, which is one of the issues, why, one of the reasons why I'm always very skeptical um, of bankruptcy as a silver bullet for Puerto Rico. So Scott Walker was right. Governor Scott Walker was right. He went after the collective bargaining Absolutely. agreements for the government unions. I mean, they're the, and the teachers' union. That's, those are the biggest special interests, aren't they, Bernie? I, 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 you're absolutely right, and he was absolutely right. And and by the way, his his uh, his labor reform plan that he uh, presented just only a few weeks before he dropped out of the race was was very very important, and and would be. I, I hope that anyone who gets elected at some point will pick it up and implement it. And he was right. I mean, the literature is clear. You need to cut entitlement spending, and you need to reform fundamentally pay. To public employees. Uh, Larry, uh, because I met Governor Scott through you of Florida, I want to call to attention to the fact that of the top five states, their energy patches, Alaska, the Dakotas, Nebraska, uh, Wyoming, but number six is Florida. Yeah. And that doesn't fit anybody's generality with an overwhelming population, very popular, lots of economic activity, people who are, are either poor or disadvantaged living in, my, in Florida, and yet their healthy fiscal condition, according to Mercatus. Yes. So... Yeah, it is. It's true. I'm, I'm actually looking at it now. It dropped, but I think it's because uh, Nebraska has been doing has been going up in the ranking. Number six is fabulous yeah. for a big state yeah. like it that with all the electoral actually, college votes it has. It was in a. It was in the top five last year. I think it was like four or something. And that's like governance, this. Larry. That's that's well, just the. I, uh, the I, think, I think it's governance, but I want to also throw in the idea of economic growth. Yeah. You know, states that don't grow have major major budget problems. And the, the, what, what happens is the jobs leave, the investors leave because they're overtaxed, and the income base shrinks, and therefore the expected tax revenues to finance the government never materialize. I mean, I'm watching this in Connecticut. We've seen it in New York for many years. So higher taxes actually 
make the fiscal burdens worse. And, of course, a state like Florida still has, uh, well, has no income tax at all. Uh, they still have relatively low tax burdens. And growth. And they are a destination for all of those people in the Northeast where right. we live, Larry. That's, that, that's where they and, go. Well, do you know what's interesting about Florida? Florida ranks really, really high on cash solvency. So it means that in spite of the fact that they don't collect an income tax, they actually collect a lot of tax enough taxes to have a lot of cash on hand to cover their short term uh, liability and the the other thing that they have is they have a, a really they rank really high in terms of of how um, taxes, revenue, and spending are when you compare to the, the state personal income so basically if there 's an emergency, how will the state be able to respond to an emergency and they they rank actually really high. And that is the expression of, you know, great preparedness, but also it's a sign of the state being able to generate enough revenue because of economic growth in spite of not having the income tax. I also want to flat, flatter uh, Ohio, Governor Kasich, and the, peop- uh, and the people who govern Ohio, because it's number 11. That doesn't seem like a very high number, but it's one of the big populous states with lots of economic downturns these last years, and it's 11 on fiscal ca- solvency. Yes, and, and, but, but you, the, the big downfall for Ohio is definitely going to, going to be its uh, unfunded liabilities. It ranks... It ranks uh, uh, pretty bad. It also um, used a lot of fiscal gimmicks to make it look much better than it actually is. I'm just looking at the big population states that are yeah, not yeah. at the bottom. That's why. because well, Ohio's blessing. I mean, I think John Kasich has done a good job restructuring the state's finances, even while he's lowered taxes to create better business incentives. But they have fracking. Yeah, they I was going fracking. to say, don't they have energy, too? They so do. does Pennsylvania, got, and Pennsylvania comes in at 39. Right. So. They've got oil and gas and a lot of revenues. Now, obviously, energy's been in a slump, but, you know, over a period of time, they've had tremendous boom, and that's thrown off a lot of receipts. The state gets, you know, royalties from all that. So, you know, that's a, a nice act of God, and it's true in Pennsylvania also. But the point is, you get these revenues, what do you do with them? And I think Kasich has returned a lot of those revenues to the taxpayers. And I think that's helped his economy. I just want to make note, Larry, that of the top states' fiscal condition, it's it's striking how many have Republican governors, isn't it, Larry? Mm, yes, it's not it, an it, just, it must be a coincidence. coincidence. Uh, Veronique Durigy of the Mercatus Center reporting on the fiscal solvency, the fiscal condition of the states, the United States of America, and Florida is the winner, to my mind. Growth low taxes and people want to live there. Uh, Larry Cudlow, CNBC, Cudlow Radio on the weekend. I'm John Batchelor.